Hi guys, it's me again. Welcome to my channel. So for today's vlog, it is about our trip in ancient city Thailand. This is the part 2 of my video. So if you wanted to view the part 1 about Erawan Museum, kindly check the link on the description box. Erawan Museum is near ancient city, so I recommend you guys to visit those places at the same day. The combo tickets that can be purchased on Cloak or KK Day at a discounted price. If you wanted to avail only the ancient city, tickets cost 700 baht for tourists, adults, and then 350 baht for tourist child. I also include the package that we have availed in the description box. Please check it out. We took a boat, which is a ride hailing up from the Erwan Museum, since the nearest train station to the ancient city is an hour walk. It will take 10 to 15 minutes if there are no traffic. There is also a scheduled tram from the Kika station to the ancient city. You can refer to the link in the description as well. Once we arrive at the entrance of the ancient city, we ask the staff to scan our QR code from Cloak, provided us the map of the whole place, marking the most recommended stops and the part that are currently under construction. There are four kinds of ways to go around the place. It is by walking, renting a bicycle, renting a golf cart, or go with the tram tour. The rent fee for bicycle and go-kart is per hour, while the fee for the tram includes the whole trip. The tram costs 80 baht, and it only is scheduled 4 times a day. The tour also have a fixed 4 stops, and there is also an allotted time of 20 to 40 minutes per stop, so the tourists can take pictures and roam around. After purchasing a tram ticket, the staff assists us to ride a golf cart going to the pickup area of the tram. That place is called the Old Market Town and that place is where you can also dine in and buy souvenirs. Since there are still a lot of time before the tram pickup, we roam around in the attractions near the pickup point. We found some replica in the Old Market Town which is the replica of Sanctuary of Truth. We also entered into a Buddha prayer room to observe the statues. Please note that it is required to remove your shoes upon entering. And also, the first stop of the tram tour, which is called Buddha Bus of the Substance Less, is actually near the pickup point. What we did is we walked towards there for approximately 10 minutes and then roam around. Since we don't want to go to any attractions that far anymore, we just went there even if it is included in the tour. As soon as we walk in, I'm struck by how gold everything was. We proceeded through on what appears to be a wishing tree. Gold and silver paper leaves are suspended from a wheel-shaped piece of steel that you may spin. We wanted to put a wish as well, but we were not sure if it is free or not. That's why we didn't push it through. Buddha Bath of the Substanceless Universe literally means abode of the Buddha, refers to the Buddha's sacred compound or the place where the Buddha's relics are enshrined. At the center of the place, you can see the Great Hall of Baradama. The beautiful architecture of the Great Hall Baradama transports visitors back to the golden days of the Ayutthaya era. The principal architecture is the enshrinement to 28 Buddha statues in his previous incarnation along with 10 Buddha statues that were believed to be his future forms. We have also entered a hall that contains the replica of the reclining Buddha. The reclining Buddha is a representation of Buddha just before he passed into the afterlife, lying on his side with a calm and content expression. Please note that it is also necessary to remove your shoes when you want it to enter to the hall. After spending our time there, we have proceeded to the tram. Our tram tour leaves after 5 minutes even if the tram bus is not yet full and proceeds with the first attraction. Since we already went to the first stop, we just take our rest inside the bus and wait for it to complete and moves to the second stop. 
The second stop is the Sandman Prasad Palace. This palace is the principal palace in the early Ayutthaya period. It was initially built in the reign of the 8th king of the Ayutthaya. The overall structure and decorations of the building, the cruciform of San Pet Prasad Palace is formed by the core of the building, a tall cube wrapped at each angle, and two wings adjacent to both sides of the central hall. You can also find Dusit Maha Prasad Throne Hall replica, and the real thing is located in the Grand Palace. In the past, the Dusit Maha Prasad Palace was an audience hall where affairs of the state were conducted and royal ceremonies are performed. The palace was built by King Rama I in 1806. The structure is a cruciform building with large high roofs. There is also a ruin that has a large room made of brick and bonded with plaster, which is called Vihanatwat Prasisantep. I'm not sure if my pronunciation is correct at this point, so please comment if I make some mistakes. Then located northeast of the main assembly hall is the Chomtong Palace Hall. It is one of the palace halls that lies within the grounds of Wat Prasisantep. It is not known exactly when it was first established, but evidence found later showed that the palace hall once functioned as a scripture repository. We also found a flower garden called Ramayana Garden. This garden is about an ancient Indian epic telling the story of the migration of the Aryan people into the Jangetic Plain of northern India. A hermit named Valmiki who composed the epic in Sanskrit verse. The epic is called Ramayana. There are actually a lot of different varieties of flowers displayed here, and there is a good picture spot at the middle. You can also take a picture with the Ramayana statue, and it looks so good. Once the 40 minutes allotted time to the second stop was completed, our tram driver proceeds to drive to our second to the last stop, which is the Wat Chongkang. We pass different attractions throughout the ride as well, but those attractions are not included in the tram stop, so we just take a video on that sceneries. Unfortunately, we have a place we wanted to go which is not included on the tram stop. It is the Sumeru Mountain. So in order for us to be able to go there, we alight at the third stop and walk towards the Sumeru Mountain by ourselves. While walking, we also found some attractions on the way. One of those is the Rainbow Bridge. As the name implies, it is a bridge with a rainbow paint and design. The Rainbow Bridge is besides the Pavilion Restaurant, so if you are using a golf cart or a bicycle and you decide your own time, and you got hungry, you can dine in here while looking at the sceneries. There is a beautiful pavilion besides it which is called Sala of Ten Reincarnations. It tells the story of the last ten lives of the Bodhisattva, the Buddha to be before he attained enlightenment and become the Venerable Buddha in the next rebirth. This is probably my favorite attraction in ancient city. There are also mural paintings across the ceiling of the pavilion. We then pass through the Royal Water Course procession, which are technically a very long gold boats. When we arrive at the Sumeru Mountain, we are quite disappointed. The colors from the pictures is different from the colors in real life. That's why we didn't indulge ourselves any longer. In order for us to meet up with our tram tour, we decided to walk towards the last stop, which is the Pavilion of the Enlightened. This attraction is the most famous, and whenever you think about ancient city, I bet that this is the first image that will come to your mind. It is actually huge, and the color is very good. I like the infrastructure where small pavilions become just one large palace-like structure. 
The Pavilion of the Enlightened symbolizes the story of 500 monks from different cultural backgrounds who attained nirvana. It's a stunning structure, and visiting the ancient city is like being in a little kingdom. We didn't have a time to go inside because our tram guide is already calling us after 10 minutes. Maybe because we take a long walk, that's why we lose our time. But it's already fine for us as we are satisfied with how we capture the beauty of the pavilion and we also took videos and pictures of it as well. Before the tram goes back to the entrance, we bought a refreshing Thai tea at the restaurant near the pavilion to cool ourselves down. Once we arrive at the entrance, we book a boat that is going directly to our hotel. I didn't really expect ancient city to be this big, and if ever you'll ask me if I will go back again, my answer is definitely yes. Thank you so much you guys for watching the videos. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel as well. Thank you!